Google has some really cool toys when it comes to extending functionality on your website or web application. The Google Maps family of APIs allows you to add really interesting and powerful functionality to your site. With the BiteNet form builder and the APIs available on the Google Cloud platform, you can do some really powerful stuff. You'll need a few things from the API toolkit, including the Maps, Places and Distance Matrix APIs, and in this video I'll show you how to get your hands on them. Hi again, this is Peter in partnership with Biotnet bringing you another Biotnet add-ons tutorial and today I'll show you how to build a very simple form on your website and by using some of the Google Maps APIs available on the Google Maps platform along with the address autocomplete fields to turn your form into a basic fare calculator or anything you can think of to apply this to for that matter. Now it's really important to note that even though this tutorial covers the form builder functionality with Biotnet add-ons for Elementor, Pytnet also has a standalone WordPress plugin named Pytnet Forms and it is compatible with any page builder. Both of these have a free version that you can download from the WordPress repository but to get maximum power and to use most of the functionality described in this video you'll need the pro version. So let's get started. In order to use this you'll need a Google Maps API key and you can grab the key by clicking on the link that's available under the Pytnet add-on settings under the Google Maps integration section. Now if you click the link, it'll take you to the Google Maps platform page. Now here you can set up a new account or you can log into an existing account. Now it's important to note here that in order to use the Maps platform you have to set up a billing profile and this is to cover any high volume API calls or really extensive use of the Maps application. Now when you sign up to the Google Cloud platform, you can get $300 of free credit on a 90 day trial. But it is also important to take note of the pricing of using the Google Maps API kit. If you go over to the pricing page and scroll down, you'll see all the different categories of all the different APIs that you need to use. And if you take a look at something like the distance matrix, which we'll be using in this video, for instance, here you can do a calculation on what the cost would be per month for using this API. Now again, I have to also mention, very nice from Google, you actually get $200 in free usage of maps, routes and places every month. So even if you extend the 1000 API calls per month, which will only cost you about $5, you sure to be pretty well covered with the free credits that you get by using this API. Now another important thing to remember is, you can also set up reminders to ensure that you don't get a scary bill after you've used up your free credit. Google won't charge you without a notification. After you've created your new Google Cloud Platform account or logged into your existing account and set up a billing profile, you'll be taken to the overview page of the Google Maps Platform. And on this page, you can see a couple of things like the APIs that are currently enabled on your account, the requests per API. So here I can see the distance matrix API that I've used, the Maps JavaScript API, the Places API, and directly below that, also the billing for the period that you've been using this. Now over the last couple of days while I've been producing this video, I've made quite an extensive number of calls in testing this functionality. And you can see that the usage I have for this past week is still well below the threshold of the $200 free dollar credits that I get. And I've only spent about just short of 50 American cents on this. Once you're settled into the overview page, I have to mention that you obviously have to assign the API keys that you create for your project to a particular project. So if I go to the top bar here and I click on the drop down, it'll open up all of the available projects that I have in my Cloud Platform account. Now you can use an existing project if you have already created one, or if not, you can always go and click on the new project button on the top right side and create a new project for your API keys. Once you've created your new project, you can now go down to the credential section where we need to go and create the API key that we'll use for this project. So on the credentials page, I head over to create credentials and down to API key. And that creates the API key for you. Now it's important here again that you restrict your key to prevent unauthorized use in production. Now what we want to be able to do here is restrict the key to only use the very specific APIs that we'll need in this example. So I'll go ahead, I'll click the restrict key option. It'll bring me over to the page where I need to specify the use of the application. 
So here I've got my API key. I can give that a name, so we'll call that Maps API key. The application restrictions, I'll keep that to none. But on the API restrictions, I want to restrict the key to the specific APIs that I'll be using for this example. So if you scroll down the list, there are a couple that I need, specifically the Distance Matrix API, the Maps JavaScript API, and also the Places API. So once I've selected all those, I'll click OK and I'll save. With my API key now created and restricted, I can go ahead and copy the API key Head back over to my PyTNet add-on settings, paste the API key and click to save settings. With the settings now out of the way, let's dive right into creating the form for this trip fare calculator. So very simply, I've got a single column. I've added a couple of PyTNet forms fields in here, along with just a simple elemental heading. Now, if I go over to the first field, which I've created as my pickup location, you can see over here that I've got a form ID, which I've specified that will be consistent over all of the fields that I have inside of this form. I've given it a field ID, which generates a short code. And very importantly here, the type of field that I've created is the address autocomplete field, which will call up the maps API that I've just saved a moment ago. Now, a couple of settings on this particular field is the enabling or disabling of Google Maps, which is effectively the ability to show the map, as you can see on the front end, of the form field that I have and it displays and it calls the API and it calls the map of a specific location and places it alongside of that form field. Now I can specify the country that this field or map needs to be specific to, but I can also, to narrow it down, put in the latitude and longitude to specify a specific location in a particular country. Next over, we've got some zoom settings, the zoom factor of the map, the height of the map that needs to be displayed, and then the basic form settings, which is around the label, the placeholder text that I want to put in. I want to show the label, and I obviously also want to auto-complete this field. Now, if I go back and I just deactivate the Google Maps option for now, you'll see immediately that that field shrinks down and it removes the map that is adjacent to that field. I'll quickly hit update. Go back to the front end, just do a quick refresh and you'll see that there is now no map associated with this field. But it'll still work in the same way with the Google Maps API driving it from the back end. If I start typing a location in, it will still recognize that location using the auto address field. If I go back and I type in another field on the maps itself, you'll see that it'll actually navigate to that location. And what it then does is it does an automatic calculation between location A and location B. And based on the fare that I've specified per kilometer or per mile, it will calculate the fare. So let's jump back over. So with the field, I'm going to activate the Google Maps option there. And I've effectively done exactly the same on the next field. I've given it a different field ID, still with the same form ID. It generates a short code. I've specified the country, latitude, longitude, the zoom factor and the height of my map. I can change this if I really wanted to, to get more visibility on that map, but that'll just extend the form too much, so we'll leave it at 300. I give the field a label, I give it some placeholder text, I want to show the label as well, and I want the field to autocomplete. The next field down is the distance field, which is effectively a calculated field which needs to capture the information from the pickup location and the drop-off location and calculate the distance between these two points. So I give it a field ID, same form ID, it generates a short code. But if I quickly jump back to the pickup location, I grab the short code over here and in the calculated field, I need to now, first things first, specify that I want to enable distance calculation on this field. So I toggle that to yes. It then asks me to specify the from field shortcode, which is my pickup location. I specify the to field shortcode, which is my drop off location. And I can also enable a specific location. Now it's very important here that it will follow the address location that is available in Google Maps. So if you have a specific location that you need to drop this off to, 
which may be a single location where the user won't necessarily have to put in something specific, you can enable that. But because I need this to be flexible, I want to capture the information that the user inputs into that field, I'll use the short code. On the distance unit, I can then set up whether I want to capture the distance in kilometers or miles, and that's really all I have to specify here. If I want to display the kilometers as a suffix to the value that will get generated in the calculated field, I can always do so here, and if I need a prefix, I can add it there. The next field down is obviously the fare calculator, which is also a calculated field. I've given it a field ID, it's a calculated field, I've given it a label, and what I've done here is I've then said, take the calculated field value from the field above and multiply it by a certain value. The output of that calculation will then give me the fare that I want to calculate using this form. So I'm gonna quickly hit update, jump back to the front end of the form, do a quick refresh, and we'll do another example yet again. So I'll select here that I want to travel from Dubai International Airport all the way to Abu Dhabi International Airport for whatever reason. It automatically, without the need for a submit button, does a dynamic calculation on the shortest distance between these two airports. And based on the expression that I've added, it'll go ahead and give me a estimated fare. And that's it, quick and effective, a fare calculator in a few easy steps. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you found it useful or helpful, remember to give us a thumbs up. And if you really liked it, leave us a comment below. Bye for now.